when I first started in 1983, the needs have become increasingly worse. Whereas one girl might have been sexually abused or, or been pregnant, or maybe have a drug problem. Uh, today, one girl can walk in and have all of the above plus more. And even though the issues are much more traumatic today than they were, you know, when I first started, he's up for the challenge and there's nothing too hard for God. God has set me free from self-harm. I am free. I am free from all condemnation. I'm grateful for the foundation that mercy helped to lay in my life. There's so many great things that are going on through the lives of the girls. I mean, literally, God is multiplying his, himself through the outreaches, all the things that these young women are doing in the United States and beyond. And really, mercy multiplied is a more accurate description of what's happening because all these years later, since 1983, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of young women that are out there doing great things because of what they experienced and the change that at Christ did. He gave them a new heart and a new spirit, a new vision for their life, new purpose. It's a perfect description of what God does at Mercy every day. Mercy multiplied. Mercy Multiplied is a biblically-based residential program that helps women experience the transforming power of God. Please welcome the founder and president and our Huck's hero tonight, Nancy Alcorn. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Governor. It's an honor. Well, the honor is ours. I have admired what you have done. I, I've learned about it. What was the moment that started this direction for you in your life? I worked for five years at a girl's prison. So it was juvenile delinquent girls that were too young to go to the women's prison. And I was athletic director there. And there were 300 girls there at any one mm -hmm. given period of time. And governor, they would go back to the same neighborhoods they came from. The pimps, the gang members, the drug dealers were all waiting on them. Some of them ended up committing suicide mm -hmm. before their 18th birthday because we were told separation of church and state. You can't share Christ. And then I spent an additional three years investigating child abuse cases in the inner city of Nashville. And I started finding myself getting angry at God, like, God, why do you have me doing this? I would have nightmares about it. Why, why, why am I here? And he said, you just spent five years dealing with angry teenage girls, and now I'm taking you back in time and showing you what happened to them and why they're so angry. So after eight years of trying to help people the government's way, no results. I realized that God has not anointed the government to heal broken hearts wow. and set captives free. That is so true. He's called us his people to do I mean, that. At best, the government can kind of contain people. Right. Well, how did you first start? You just go out and say, okay, I'm going to find 10 girls and create a home for them? I mean, it has to be a beginning somewhere. Huh. So the first home up in Louisiana, this is our 36th year, and I left uh, Tennessee with $1,000 in my pocket, and God said, I want you to take the young women in free of charge and they have to want help. They can't be sent. Hmm. They have to want help. Secondly, I want you to not ever take any government funding or any other funding that will restrict the freedom to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, which will heal broken hearts and help people walk in freedom. And thirdly, we tie this as an organization to other Christian organizations that are helping hurting people. And the Lord was like, your needs will be met through your giving. And 36 years later, we've got uh, several homes in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom. We're spreading across Europe, New Zealand. We're opening in Northern Ireland in 2020. What typically happens that causes these people to be so lost in this world? Well, uh, what typically happens in a lot of the cases is that the young, young girls are sexually abused, sometimes as young as three and four years old. Oh my gosh. And uh, that's one of the common denominators, but also broken families. Like we have one girl that, that, I, um, that came in and her father was in prison. Her mother was a drug addict and she got put in a foster home before she was like even six years old mm -hmm. and she got sexually abused in the foster home. Oh. So then she went to the grandparents' home and she got sexually abused by close family members in the foster home. So her first suicide attempt was age nine oh. and seven, uh, seven more suicide attempts later, she landed in the hospital at age 19 and these pastors in Ohio knew about our program and went and told her and she said, I want help. I can't live like this anymore. She came in and graduated six years ago and now she has gone and gotten education and she's working in a group home helping young people with disabilities. What a beautiful uh, reminder that there's no such thing as a person beyond redemption. Right. No such thing as a person who is beyond hope. 
You're giving hope and help to these young women that everyone else has given up on. Basically, people are realizing that, that God is always working in us, you know, to, to free us so that we can help free other people. And uh, so it, it's exciting to see what's happening. Nancy, I want to tell you, you truly are a hero. And thank you for sharing your great story. This book, Treatment or Transformation, 13 Real Stories, why you can't argue with a changed life. I hope you'll get Nancy's book, learn about this incredible ministry. You can learn about her mission or get help by visiting mercymultiplied.com. That's mercymultiplied.com. It's on your screen. It's a ministry that is free to those who need the help.